Dr. Lou George, Dr. Dennis Miller, Siouxland Oral Surgery. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning, Bill. Good morning, Bill. You guys have put together something that's uh, special in this particular area, and that's your study group, the referral dentist that you have. And you've actually been more than just Sioux Falls for a long period of time. Well, with regard to the study club, we've got a great draw area from the regions of Mitchell, even Huron, Yankton, Brookings, uh, and then around the Iowa River Valley area on the border. And we've been doing that probably since about 2002, 2004, I think. And then we opened up uh, satellite offices or outreach offices, we called them. Again, Mitchell, Yankton, Brookings. And we've kind of combined that with our study group, the people that we work with, uh, so we can deliver the best care that we can to the patients uh, from a continuing education standpoint by bringing in speakers either locally, regionally, or nationally, and then uh, delivering care. Uh, When you have a surgery, it's a lot better, I think, to have the surgery done locally because then once you're done, your driver, your family drives you home, and it's a quick a lot of times, 10, 15-minute drive versus, let's say, you're from Mitchell. Well, you first see a drive to Sioux Falls, hour, hour and a half. Then when you're done, it's another hour and a half drive home, and you get the swing in the car, and if you've been sedated, you can get sick. So that's just part of everything we do. We try and take care of the people that um, we work with our referral base and offer continued education and learn together, but more importantly for our patients, we invested heavily in our outreach clinics to make them modern and clean and nice and every bit as good as the one we have in Sioux Falls so that we can take care of our patients in these outlying clinics as well. Plus the dentists in these communities are learning by being with others that maybe they wouldn't have come together for. Yes, uh, that's very true, Bill. Uh, We're we're very fortunate to have such a broad base of referrals um, and uh, referring docs that it it's always good when we can get uh, people from different communities, say from Yankton or Mitchell or Brookings, uh, together with our Sioux Falls group or perhaps uh, Nebraska or Iowa groups, because then they can learn from each other and kind of learn what we're putting out there and uh, presenting as the uh, national standard of care. And they take that back to their own practices where they might not have heard that Um until they got out and got around and intermingled with each other. And like Dennis said, when it comes to the patients, it's it's really important. Uh, we really like to stress our outreach and satellite offices because uh, rather than making them come to us in Sioux Falls, we don't mind uh, going out there to them and making their surgical ordeal uh, smaller in the fact that they don't have a, a big drive on top of it. They can just um, go home, say, two, three blocks away. And it's always uh, very flattering when we go to um, these uh, satellite offices and uh, we have folks uh, from other states who um, uh, have referred to us uh, and bypass oral surgeons in their own states just to come and see us. That that humbles both Dennis and I uh, quite a bit, and we always want to maintain that uh, perfect reputation. Yeah, I'd like to add one more thing onto that is that <clears throat> the smaller communities that we're at, they're small urban centers, but you see more of the rural community there, where Sioux Falls being a bigger urban center, you see less of the urban community. And a lot of times the expectations for reconstruction and surgery from those two communities um, are different. You could actually be three communities. There's an inner city community here in Sioux Falls as well. And the reason why I mention that is when it comes to standard of care, patients deserve to hear all their options. So from a surgery perspective, oral surgeons are equipped by training to give patients all of their options. So let's take dental implants, for example. Um, If you're in a community where you don't have a lot of options, you might be given one way of doing a dental implant with one way of doing a bone graft. And if you're in an urban community with oral surgeons, you'll get more options. We bring that to these smaller communities. So patients can make good decisions on the care that they receive because we can offer them more surgical options. They might not choose one versus another, but at least they had the opportunity to discuss and get educated so they can make proper decisions. That's right. I had a chance to uh, mingle with some of these at one of your events this last fall where 
they were actually hanging on every word, even yours. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not the greatest speaker in the world. But they were hanging because they were with other people that are in the dental community. It was like going back to school, going back to a group that you have respect for, and it's like this is valuable time that was spent together, and you made sure they felt that they had come to a place that really cares about them. It's like a class reunion. That's very important. Mm -hmm. Uh, Dennis and I are very big on um, uh, making everyone part of the group. Okay, uh, we, we, we always function better when there's more eyes looking at something and, and more ideas being thrown together. So this has always been about uh, building each other up and uh, teaching each other new things so that we can ultimately better service our patients. And so we found this approach has, has worked very well throughout the years, and uh, it's never been working better than it is right now. We're, we're just very fortunate to have such a wonderful referral base and the great number of patients we have who um, who are usually very open-minded and uh, eager to get uh, treatment. One thing that I see with a lot of people in business is that they consider if it's not Sioux Falls, it doesn't matter. What I'm hearing from you guys, when you start adding up all these communities that are out there, it's bigger than Sioux Falls. And you have a lot of people that are out there. We know that you're going to take care of them in Sioux Falls because we hear that every day. But the fact that you guys have reached out, they are reaching back, and they're providing better care is impressive. Yeah, I think it's a two-way street. Um, we come out to the outlying communities, and we meet with our referral base there. And in many instances, they come back to Sioux Falls for some of their continuing education and meet with our study session or study club. And uh, going back to the earlier statement, rural versus urban, then our community of dentists they talk to each other and talk about the things that they see in their practices what works in their practice what doesn't work what works for their population what doesn't work and it's all about exchanging ideas what uh, what works what doesn't and what's good for the patient just the, oh. j just time to let you guys talk about this because i think a lot of times we do not point out the siouxland oral surgery difference okay you guys are both different. You can't take the same one. So you get to pick first. Why is Siouxland oral surgery different? I would say, well, for me, the one thing that I would pick on would be continuing education. I think that there's a, mm, a, a general trend for a lot of people uh, to – because we're all on five-year cycles for getting uh, our, our licenses renewed – and we need to have a certain amount of continuing education. I think it's it's human nature for a lot of people to just have a small amount of continuing ed here and a little bit there, and then, oh, my gosh, it's, it's five years. I've got to get a whole bunch. And I think our difference is we're not doing that all in one chunk. We're going through continuing education pretty well every month. So if you add it up, uh, in the dental community, you need 100 hours every five years plus 25 hours of anesthesia. Um, you have to do that all in about five years. And we typically get around 30-something uh, plus every year. And we also go to our national meetings as well. So we always exceed that. So I think I think that's our difference. We're always continuously on top of that kind of stuff rather than trying to, you know, for lack of a better term, uh, do a, what's it called crash studying, you know, before a big exam. You know, so we're more the type of people I think that we're just continuously trying to learn. All right. You can't take the same one, Dr. Okay. Jones. I have to throw that away then. Actually, just throw it away. <laughs> I, I took the easy one. No, I, I definitely agree with uh, Dr. Miller there. Um, but uh, if I had to pick, I would say uh, individual attention. Um, that's that's something that, uh, that I've always been very big on. And when I came here, uh, I'm fortunate enough to join Siouxland back in 2007, they had already had that model in place, and and so I was able to jump in with that and, and help it even grow. So what I mean by that is um, we have the large staff that we do so that all of our patients' needs can be met on an individual manner. Uh, the last thing that we um, would ever want to be uh, uh, accused of is brushing over what is important to our patients. 
Uh, so many times in, in large medical practices or large surgical offices, um, patients can be brought through, um, barely have any time with their doctor, and uh, then they're gone, treatment rendered, and uh, it's that type of relationship. We really like to spend time talking with our patients. Uh, a lot of times uh, we see patients for only a, a one or two visits, but in that time period, I want them, and so does Dennis, to know that they know who we are, we know who they are, and they can always feel comfortable talking with us about any concerns or questions that come up. And, um, you know, seeing how we have a very short window to establish that relationship, right, when we meet the patient, it's very important that they can see that we're very genuine and very authentic about our approach of individual attention and in individual care. So to me, that would be uh, something that I feel uh, we really set or help to set the bar for. And how do they get started? Well, we can be reached through our website at uh, SulandOralSurgery.com or give us a call, 605-335-1080. Siouxland Oral Surgery, Dr. Lou George, Dr. Dennis Miller, thanks for the visit. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill.